All right, full tour of the Korean supermarket right here in Seoul. Let's check it out. And so naturally we start in the fruit and veggie section, but first things first, this place is absolutely massive. Truly a supermarket or a superstore. And I guess from what I see, the fruit prices are kind of expensive. Let's browse and see various items, but uh, it is winter time here in Seoul, and I guess the fruit is seemingly sort of expensive. Now we have to try and factor in whether it's expensive for someone living here in Seoul. Obviously Ivana and I do not earn in Korean won and do not live here, but we have done supermarket tours in sort of comparable countries recently, including China, Singapore, even Japan. So for our eyes, it seems to be a little expensive for fruit, although it could be a different story for the locals. But of course, we could not do a Korean supermarket tour without the fruit called persimmon, which is distinctly Korean to me. I'm sure you can find it in other places, but uh, Koreans seem to love the persimmons. Not to mention, in Korea, I guess the carrots are filthy dirty. <laughs> We're just something new. <laughs> and I guess the uh, the potatoes, same story. Oh my gosh, look at all the persimmons. Although these ones look a bit dried, no? Yeah, I think they're dried. Like a dried persimmon. And uh, not cheap. Am I reading this right? 80,000 won? It's like... Imitation. Oh, imitation. Imitation. Ah. Oh, imitation. Yeah, yeah. It's not persimmon. Oh, imitation persimmon. Oh, this is the real one, frozen. Thank you, thank you for your help. Oh, so the, the, the real dried persimmon is frozen and it's a lot cheaper, it looks like. No, no, no. Oh, that's for this one. Okay, okay, okay. Wow, so helpful lady. First time we've done a supermarket tour where the staff noticed that I'm lost and just immediately come help. Oh, this one is the real one. Thank you. Thank you. This one is the real persimmon. So this one is way cheaper than the other one. I think they're just showing us a cheaper option. Oh, I see. Maybe Sienna understood you saying, is this $80 really? But she did say, she did say imitation. I know. I don't know. Is it fake persimmon worth a lot? No, I think those are real. This looks very yummy, no? It looks like a uh, dried peach almost. Yeah. Ivana describes persimmon as peach plus jelly. Yes. Like a exactly. gel jelly peach. Yeah. Kind of yummy and very it's popular yummy. in I Korea. Like it. It's sweet. Fair. You, you never try it. It's okay. It's not my favorite, but it, it's, it's yummy. It's still fruit. Yeah, they really like things au naturel in Korea. They want to show you what it looks like. And I've noticed that the signage is very helpful. So even in English, it says you can bring this item on a plane store in a cool place with no sunlight so a very helpful signage and i've noticed the displays are really elaborate and even some free samples yeah which right. who can resist <laughs> wow <laughs> this one thank you uh, same like japan they got the amazing color it almost looks like it's fake yeah. I think it's real because they're offering it as samples. Fresh, like but sashimi. It looks so uh, eye popping. It's a big piece. Good? Okay. It might be good with salad. Octopus Some salad. Vinaigrette. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Very good. A bit chewy. <laughs> not bad. <laughs> and it costs. Oh, not too bad. This is the cost. Now, typically on the supermarket tours, we like to show the cheapest eggs, which I guess is 4,000 won. And do they come in 12 or 10? It looks like 10. 10 eggs for 4,000 won seems to be the cheapest option. Although you'll probably save some money if you buy the extra large 25 pack, which is a uh, unique packaging. Looks like a pizza, no? <laughs> and I guess similar to Japan, they have some sashimi here, which is already sliced for you and looking very beautiful. Not to mention the fish are tied together by rope here in Korea. Uh, the packaging is really 
something special, something different. The presentation is uh, something unique. Oh, you know what? Maybe it's for a gift. That's why it's wrapped so nicely. This looks like anchovy, but the way it's presented is almost like you would give it as a housewarming present yeah. or something. Oh, yeah. 75 Canadian, yeah. It's a uh, good gift. It's a good Someone gift. Right, right, right. Not for Steve. <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> and so it's very convenient for Ivana and I because 1,000 won is exactly equal to one Canadian dollar. So all the prices you see are so easy to convert. Although for the sake of the video, top of the screen we'll put US dollars because more people know. But uh, when we see the prices, it's very easy for us to convert to Canadian dollars. OMG. OMG. Look at the size of the crab. So first of all, still alive, obviously. You can see his uh, teeth, I'm gonna call them. Although almost look like little fingers in his in his mouth there. And king I would crab. call this like a king crab. King crab, I think. Only reason I know this is because of the show, Deadliest Catch. Did you ever see? Very popular North American show where people go catch these crabs. Uh, big and on display. More than a few. And so just like that, we are into the meat section. Now I'm very curious what the price of meat is because as you guys know, Canada is having a crisis in terms of the grocery prices, especially as it pertains to meat. Over here, the prices seem to be sort of manageable. Maybe not cheap, but certainly better than Canada. And they've even got some, what I would call Wagyu beef or looks to be Japanese with the marbling. Now, maybe I'm offending the Koreans. There could be a Korean type of beef like this, but uh, but to my eyes, this looks sort of Japanese and looks delicious and kind of decent price, I guess. Although if you want, you can spend a lot on meat. This is gonna be like around $40. And for me having dinner, that's uh, dinner for one. Maybe it serves two, but that's a lot. Although it looks so good, doesn't it? <laughs> So maybe you get what you pay for in the meat department here in Korea. And as it turns out, I think chicken is the way to go here in Korea. Seems to be better value in terms of the price per 100 grams. I mean, that's a kilo of chicken for like eight or nine bucks American. Not bad at all. And as for pork, maybe somewhere in the middle. Although still kind of affordable actually. Pork and chicken are the way to go, Ivana. I'm gonna be uh, beef free. Pork and chicken Italian here in Korea. Oh, and the ribs come pre sliced. Not bad, actually. Not bad. Looks yummy. And I guess after the raw meat section comes the pre cooked meat section, which has some buckets of KFC. Now, when I say KFC, I mean. Korean fried chicken, not Kentucky fried chicken, but does look very familiar to the North American uh, KFC and uh, not a bad price, I would say. Kind of affordable. OMG, pause the vlog. We have found my favorite section. So from KFC, we've come to KSC. And I guess these are what I would call chicken wings, but almost look like chicken nuggets with yeah. sauce on them. I've made the mistake of showing up to the grocery store hungry and this is like, Put four in the basket and don't leave the house for two days. Oh, that looks yummy. Different flavors too. <laughs> that looks yummy and all different flavors. Garlic and maybe some spicy ones and maybe some different flavors. Looks delicious. Love it. And from the chicken, right into more sushi. Ivana, you're smart. Is there such thing as Korean sushi? My potentially ignorant opinion is all sushi is from Japan. Yes, I think they're Japanese. But it's popular in Korea, I, I guess, so. at the very least, because they have lots yes. of it for sale. Okay, fair. I just thought maybe I was neglecting the whole country of uh, Korea in terms of sushi. Oh, oh, oh. Ivana says maybe this is more Korean sushi. Yeah. So to me, this looks like it has, I want to say ham in it. Is that ham? I think it's ham. Some sort of cured yeah. pork products. Uh, the price is not too bad. Sometimes kimchi. And even some kimchi in the Korean sushi. Yeah, fair. So naturally, I guess they borrowed the recipe and twisted it to make it their own. <laughs> and the prepared food section, quite big and kind of good. There's some good looking food in there at relatively decent prices. Funny that the raw meat is expensive, but the prepared meat is almost cheaper. Yeah. I don't know if it's cheaper, but it's at least comparable pricing. Kind of funny. 
Now, I couldn't show you guys the Korean supermarket without showing you this section. This is something unique and something new. First of all, so friendly ladies. So sweet, helpful ladies. And I guess this is the kimchi and um, maybe frog's legs, maybe crab. Uh, what's this one? Octopus. Octopus. It's spicy. Oh, okay, okay. No, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They even have like the small crab. Oh, small crab. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Small crab. Eat, eat everything. You wanna eat a small crab? You wanna eat a small crab? This is this is my wife. My wife will eat. Don't be shy, Ivana. I can't even. I can't even. Can't, can't, can't do it. Babe. Oh god! No, it's a, thank, you, okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. I feel so rude. Can eat it? Find yes. Them. I'm gonna gag. Take a leg. Take a leg. Oh god! I ripped this head. Are you the shell too? Yeah. Just eat the whole thing. Not bad. <laughs> oh. Oh, it's not. Oh, it's very spicy. I guess these are like all the side dishes in Korea. You got potatoes. The side dish station. Some veggies, kimchi. I don't know. You know what I could have had some potato sample. Why did you? <laughs> I ripped off the top of the crab, and now I got like guts hanging out. <laughs> I immediately regret this decision. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so nice people. I walk around this for a month now. I want to just hold this for the rest of the day. <laughs> you are so funny. I can't remember. And so, immediately shifting gears from something off my palate to something very much so on my palate. Uh, ketchup. By the way, organic Heinz, that's something new. It looks like the organic Heinz is like a buck fifty more than the regular Heinz. But they do have ketchup here, including large bottles in Korea, as well as mayonnaise, small mustard section. Ooh, check this out. That's called hot dog relish. Don't mind if I do. That's good stuff. That's going to be mustard and pickles. Yeah. Hot dog relish. Oh, big fan. Never tried it, but I already like it. That's my kind of condiment right there. And wow, would you look at that? Even tomato ketchup for kids. The price is right. What's the difference between ketchup and ketchup for kids? I don't know. Maybe no uh, preservatives or something. <laughs> Never saw that before. Something new. I tell you what. Two thumbs up for Korea. Look at all the mustard. You guys know, <laughs> mustard is the best condiment ever made. Not even close. They got honey mustard. They got the Dijon and the whole grain mustard. Big fan. Even a honey mustard sauce in a, in a pack. Way to go, Korea. And you know what's so unique about Korea? It really stands out to me. Korea is a cold weather country, but they eat so spicy food. Typically, the countries that eat this red pepper paste are ones that are in the sun because uh, spicy food makes you sweat and cools you off in the hot weather. Whereas when you start to sweat in the winter, it's very dangerous. But Koreans, they're not afraid. They eat the spice and they go out in the snow. I sort of admire that. Eat the spice and go in the, out in the snow. Not many countries do that. <laughs> and by the way, what a spicy section it is. From the far end, all the way down to here. Spicy pepper. Now, Ivana must be like 25% Korean or something because it seems like in Korea they love this seaweed snack I've tried it I've, appro I've approached it with an open mind I can't quite wrap my head around it it tastes like crunchy crispy seawater salt water I like it but there's literally a whole row here and around the next section it's all seaweed paper when you have kids just saying I'm not gonna put him chips just 
if that kid has anything to do with me, he's gonna take one bite and say, give me some potato chips, thank you very much. <laughs> I encourage you to try, but I don't think you'll like it. <laughs> and speaking of potato chips, here we are now where the section is remarkably smaller than the seaweed section. So they've got their own brand here, it looks like. And they do sell Lay's, although the selection is pretty limited. I think Koreans are into seaweed snack a lot more than they're into potato chips. The section is like one-tenth the size. I mean, it's literally two flavors of Lay's. You got the sour cream and cheddar, which sounds good. And salt and vinegar, which by the way, very North American brand and, and one of the top flavors. A good salt and vinegar chip. If you yeah. eat if you eat a bag or two, your mouth will hurt yeah, and your tongue will almost bleed. And it's amazing. And so, pause the vlog. We have a new favorite item. Look at the size of the popcorn here in Korea. I mean, this popcorn is bigger than Ivana's head. <laughs> 220 grams, which my guess would have been three or four kilos. I mean, look at the size of the bag. And the flavor is butter, garlic, and onion. I love it. Cost 3,500 won. We're gonna buy a bag. World's biggest popcorn, big fan. Way to go, Korea. <laughs> now, a common section we do here on our supermarket tours is what type of oil do they sell most and how much does it cost? Seems like you've got everything under the sun from grapeseed to olive oil and into the sort of cheaper canola oil and sunflower oil too and into the sunflower oil so whatever you like they have it here and maybe we'll show you the cheapest one maybe this big. which maybe seems to be this big bottle now just says frying oil although the one beside it is slightly cheaper and it's actually soybean oil and it's a pretty cheap price actually okay there you have it wow I didn't think I'd see that. So this is the canned tuna section. And up here they're selling something which they're calling silkworm pupa. I'm gonna say this is sago worm. This is the thing we ate in Malaysia. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know they sold that here wow. in Korea. Uh, and it's a deal, it's like a dollar. So uh, if you're ever... Very nutritious. Very nutritious, also very wormy. <laughs> And it wouldn't be a Korean supermarket without an entire row, both sides, mind you, just for ramen, instant noodles, including the six pack of the pink ones. Am I right to say that pink ones are usually the spicy ones? Oh yeah. When you see fire on the label, you avoid, if you're me. And so I believe Korean ramen has become like world famous. Yes. Now Ivana is an Indomie, the Indonesian instant noodle type of person. That's right. But you have said before that Ramen is number two. Korean ramen, number two. For instant noodles. And the section could not be bigger. It's, uh, you name a flavor, they've got it. Probably in three different companies have it. So it's, uh, it's a buyer's market here in, uh, <laughs> ramen section. <laughs> and I guess this is the first time I've seen, yeah, the supermarket really sells gifts. Uh, they've got your oils and some tuna and some soy sauce gift they got the what looks like korean spam as a gift something new it's a gift right yeah gift set. something new i've never seen a, a gift set in the supermarket even this one which is like tuna spam and you know canned food gift i mean it makes sense it's a gift who doesn't need food <laughs> everybody needs food so it makes sense i wonder if it's for the lunar new year coming up or oh. is it just like an everyday thing Good question. Good question. And so typically we show you guys the cheapest liter of milk. That's a common thing we do on these supermarket tours for comparison to different countries. I will say first things first, the milk section or the dairy section is huge. Although that might just be because the supermarket itself is so big and every section is kind of big. But let's find the cheapest milk if we can. Looks like it's about 3,000 won for a liter. And this is fresh milk. They also have the UHT milk, which I guess is from a powder or something, rehydrated. But you're looking at about 3,000 won for your cheapest liter of milk. Which is uh, sort of fair. And so let's talk about it. They've got both Pepsi and Coca-Cola here at the Korean supermarket. Let's do a price comparison. Because as we know, matter of fact, 
Coca-Cola is the superior product. Uh, 2,600 won for nearly two liters, 1.8 of Coca-Cola, whereas 2,900 won for Pepsi. How could Pepsi be worth more? You know what? I think Pepsi is more popular in Korea. Is it true? I think so. OMG. <laughs> My opinion of this country has changed forever. No, I'm kidding. They also have uh, lemon zero sugar coke with a very funny label I've never seen before. As well as Pepsi lime flavor zero sugar. Fruity cola beverages seems to be a thing here in Korea. Interesting. And I guess right next to the Pepsi and Coke section is some restaurants, which is interesting, as well as the beer and alcohol section. So maybe let's look for some Korean beer. I know Koreans like soju, but do they have Korean beer? That could be an interesting find. Well, I guess a lot of the brands here are from Europe, naturally, and sort of European style with these big two liter or 1600 milliliter jugs, plastic jugs of beer, which by the way, not the cheapest beer ever for 5,600 won. Uh, maybe we'll find a better deal somewhere. Here you go. There's a big jug for 2,800 won. Pretty good price if you can tolerate drinking beer out of a big plastic bottle. <laughs> And of course, tons of tall cans of beer. None of the brands here jump off the shelf and scream to me that they're Korean brands. No. Seems like they're mostly just imported stuff. And the prices are not that cheap. Looking at cheapest you're gonna find is like 2,000 won a can. And for the premium brand, it's more like 2,600. So, only okay prices. Don't get me wrong. We'll still buy a few cans. I mean, come on. But it's not super cheap. And right here by the cash registers, they've got something sort of new, sort of different that Ivana and I haven't seen before. It's called the must-haves of Korea. So I guess this is, again, it's like souvenirs. And this particular one says number one most popular item. Do you know what this is? It looks like a biscuit, a vanilla biscuit. It's like cake. Oh, it's like a cake. Like biscuit cake. Like a biscuit cake. Uh, interesting that it's the number one most popular item because when I think of Korean food, I think kimchi, I think spicy fried chicken, I think seafood, I don't think cake. But I guess it's a popular item here in Japan, at least for some tourists to buy. Uh, and it has many different variations, whether it's a cocoa hazelnut or the white hazelnut, the list goes on. And it's a huge section here that's all number one most popular must-haves of Korea. Something interesting. Now the bread section is naturally not the biggest and typically we show you guys the cheapest loaf of bread which in korea is a full size a lot of asia has the half size bread they do have the big one 3581 <laughs> although the cheapest one will actually be a small one this is about three quarters of a loaf in canada maybe half loaf for 1590 not the worst price ever kind of fair and last but not least we typically show the coffee section versus the tea section in these supermarket tours and we look for which one is bigger it's funny here in korea this entire section is tea and the opposite aisle is all coffee so they're equal and opposite and both very big and they even have this sign here saying liquid tea which is actually liquid that you add to your tea so it's mixed honey it's uh, wild flower honey it's korean ginseng honey so these are all things that you would mix with a fresh cup of tea. And funny that they have a huge tea section as well as a huge coffee section. They're drinking both coffee and tea. Right. Dual, dual country, which is sort of unique. And in terms of coffee, they've got everything you might want, including the Kanu Barista machines here. Looking quite fancy, something similar to a Keurig. Right. Yeah. Keurig? Keurig. Keurig machines. Okay. And even some cheaper coffees and oh my gosh do i love the smell of the coffee aisle <laughs> now as you guys know i quit drinking coffee about two weeks ago i will admit i have relapsed and i've been drinking one cup a day but i'm down from four cups a day so i've been trying to limit my coffee intake to say the That's least true. but uh the smell is intoxicating and actually the price here in korea is not too bad for coffee yeah kind of manageable and so in conclusion 
I exist in two spaces simultaneously. On one hand, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, the channel was built on honesty and respecting the audience. On the second hand, I'm not gonna try some food and then right in front of the person who served it to me, make a face and be rude. So I wanna be honest with you guys, the octopus that was raw and purple was not bad. That was me pushing my boundaries and it was okay. But that little crab on a stick, <laughs> I really had no business eating that. I sort of feeling, I'm sort of feeling bad even trying it because I had to waste it. I, I really don't was enjoy- it like eating fingernails? It was like eating a spicy anchovy fingernail. <laughs> I really don't enjoy wasting food, but that poor crab, he died for nothing because I had no chance of enjoying that. And that was my mistake. <laughs> now, with that being said, it is funny how these uh, things work in different countries because two weeks ago, we were in Tokyo where we stayed at a similar type of accommodation as ours now, mm -hmm. one bedroom apartment. But in Tokyo, it was twice as expensive. 100 American per night compared to 50 American per night. But in Tokyo, the food was considerably cheaper. Yeah. So it's bit. it's something to do with economics and politics and it's all over my head. But it is interesting because as a tourist, if you're staying in Korea for a long time, uh, the food bill would add up. Whereas for a short trip, you save lots of money compared to Tokyo because it's half price for accommodation of similar quality and location. Anyway, interesting stuff, uh, good experience. And now we're going to get out of the cold, go home and make some dinner. Later, guys.